So Ardi, what is GDPR? The General Data Protection Regulation is the biggest reboot in our thinking about data protection and privacy for 20 years. In effect, it's replaced the Data Protection Directive 9546 EC, which gave birth to the Data Protection Act here in the UK that came out in 1998. Whereas before we looked at data protection as a bit of a tick box exercise, this takes a risk-based approach and the risk is through the lens of not you and me as organisations, but the lens of the individual. That could be a customer, a client, if you're a voluntary sector organisation, your supporters and quite importantly your employees. So we need to understand what are we doing in terms of processing personal data, is there any very high risk attached to doing that kind of work and what steps we should take to mitigate that risk so it doesn't cause harm and damage. If we're able to do all those things, to record the way in which we've done that, then we will be within the regulation, not outside of it. And that's very, very important. It's an outcomes-based, risk-based approach to data protection. So from an organisational perspective, how is this different from the existing legislation? If you look at the Data Protection Act of 1998, it would probably tell you what to do. That's not the case with the General Data Protection Regulation. It's really important that we understand that we do things in accordance with good practice, that we put the rights and freedoms and interests, as the regulation describes it, of our customers, our clients, our supporters and employees at the centre of our thinking. What's really important for organisations to get their head round when it comes to the GDPR? Well, there are two things which are really important about the GDPR. The first is actually transparency, and the second is accountability. These two principles run all the way through the regulation. Uh, one of the questions we ask organisations is, how old is your oldest piece of data? And it's very interesting, the answers you get in relation to that, and you actually They've been hanging on for data for too long. What are the sanctions if this isn't done properly? What's the risk to organisations for ignoring this? Well, getting it badly wrong has both a financial consequence but also a non-financial consequence which is really linked to reputation, if you like. Financially, it could be up to 4% of global turnover or 20 million euros, whichever is greater. It could also be an organisational measure against the organisation itself to stop it processing personal data, either on a temporary or permanent basis. But actually, if you take a step back from that, it's actually the reputation of the organisation that's really at stake. One of the things that the Information Commissioner will be looking for is how are you complying with the GDPR? There are three things to bear in mind. There's the appointment of a DPO. There's what's called a data protection impact assessment that's usually overseen by a DPO. And the third thing they look for is compliance with what's known as codes of conduct. If we're able to do all those things and make sure that people are adequately trained and adequately resourced to do that, then we've done exactly what the supervisory authority and the regulators want us to do. We've taken those steps as a responsible organisation. What are the things that organisational leaders should be flagging as potential areas of concern right now? It's very important that organisations don't over-process personal data, and don't over-collect personal data. So where is that personal data? The regulation applies not just to electronic personal data, but also hard copy personal data as well. The European Commission will have a massive PR push come January 2018 where there's going to be a coordinated PR campaign to get people watching this um, interview, people like you and me, to be able to ask questions about what's happening with our personal data, what's going on with it, etc. and make those questions you know, and seek those answers. So we know that the floodgates are going to open. It's time to get prepared for that. So we're not just wrapped up in doing subject access requests that actually we allow people to, if you like, serve themselves in relation to the data that we're processing on the website or any, anywhere else. 